Hello friends, in today's video we shall go through the concept of engineering production function and engineering cost. Production is the process of transforming or converting inputs into output and when this process is represented in a functional format we get a production function. For instance, a production function say Q is the function of R, L, K and T shows that the total output produced is a function of the amount of raw materials taken, the number of laborers and capital used as well as the available technology. So basically a production function shows the maximum amount of output that can be produced with the given level of inputs. So what is an engineering production function? The word engineering in economics denotes how the engineering aspects can be applied to the economic issues. We shall see in detail what that means in the later part of the video. So the concept of engineering production function was first introduced by Hollis B. Chenery. So he basically gave importance to the engineering variables used for producing output and those engineering variables have certain qualities or characteristics such as hardness, purity, strength, quality etc. So basically what Chenery meant is that an engineering production function is obviously a relationship between a physical input and a physical output but each input have a vector of characteristics which deals with physically relevant units such as hardness, purity, quality, strength etc. Now let's take an example of pen. In order to produce a pen we need raw materials such as plastic in order to produce the outer casing of the pen, metal in order to produce the nib of the pen, similarly ink and also in order to aggregate all these raw materials and convert it into a pen we need laborers as well as capital units so if we were talking about the economic function of producing a pen then we would have been dealing with statistical aggregates such as the man hours used for producing the pen the amount of raw materials used for the production of pen the capital value added for the production of pen etc but when it comes to engineering functions, we basically deal with the physically relevant units such as the hardness, purity, strength or quality of the inputs that are being used for the production of pen. Say for instance the quality or the hardness of the plastic used for producing the outer casing of the pen. The strength or the purity of the metal that is used for producing the nib of the pen. So here we are mainly focusing on the characteristics of the inputs that are being used for the production of pen. And such qualities are given importance because the firm's cost of production changes with the quality of inputs used. Suppose if a low quality plastic is being used or a low quality metal is being used for the production of a pen then the firm's cost of production will be low. On the other hand if the plastic used is a high grade plastic or if the metal used is of a pure quality which has great strength then the firm's cost of production will also increase. So based on the quality or the purity or the strength of the inputs that is being used, firms' cost of production will also change. Now let's explain an engineering production function with the help of a diagram. Engineering production functions are characterized by a limited number of methods of production. Now in the diagram we can see four methods of production which are represented by the rays P1, P2, P3 and P4. Now suppose if we take the production method P1 and we want to know the amount of labor and capital used for the production of a particular level of output. So in order to identify that from the given level of output we need to draw a straight line touching to the x-axis as well as the y-axis. In this way we can identify the amount of labor capital combination used for the production of that particular level of output with the method of production P1. Now suppose if the firm is opting for the P2 method of production then in order to produce the same level of output the amount of labor and capital that is required in the P2 method of production can be identified by drawing a straight line to the x-axis and y-axis from that point. Similarly, we can identify the amount of labor and capital required for the production of the same level of output by using P3 or P4 method of production. Here we can see that when we join all those labor capital combinations from different methods of production, in order to produce the same level of output, we are getting the production isocons as a kinked one. And this kinked isocon reflects the limited substitutability of labor and capital. It means that suppose if you are taking a smooth convex isocon, 
isocon we can easily substitute labor for capital or capital for labor in order to produce the same level of output but that is not possible in the case of a kinked isocon why because the substitutability between labor and capital is limited and even if that substitution is possible that substitution can happen only at the kinks of each of the production method say for instance in p1 method of production 5 units of capital and 2 units of labor is used for the production of a particular level of output and in p2 method of production say 3 units of capital and 3 units of labor is used for the production of the same level of output whereas in p3 method of production 2 units of capital as well as 4 units of labor is used for the production of the same level of output so here we can see that if the firm chooses to produce that particular level of output by using p1 method of production then he will have to use 5 units of capital and 2 units of labor in order to produce that output now suppose if he want a different labor capital combination in order to produce the same level of output then he will have to change his method of production to p2 or p3 in order to produce that level of output with a different labor capital combination Now suppose if the firm wants to produce a higher level of output by using P1 method of production itself then the firm will have to choose a higher level of labor as well as capital here labor is not substituted for capital or capital is not substituted for labor rather both labor and capital has been increased in the same method of production P1 itself and suppose if the firm wants to reduce the amount of capital used and increase the amount of labor used then the firm will have to change his production method from p1 to p2 the amount of labor and capital used in each method of production can be understood from the slope of the production methods itself here in p1 method of production it's clearly visible that more amount of capital and comparatively less amount of labor is used whereas compared to p1 method of production in p2 method of production we can see that more amount of labor and less amount of capital is being used similarly in p3 method of production we can see that compared to p2 more amount of labor and lesser amount of capital is being used so now we know that in a kinked isocon factor substitution occurs at the kinks now what happens on the straight segments of those isocons on the straight segments of the isocons we can see a combination of the adjacent methods of production that is on the straight segments a combination of p1 method of production as well as p2 method of production is employed in order to produce the same level of output for a firm to produce a particular level of output the firm has different methods of production in front of him now which choice of technique or which labor capital combination will the firm choose so the firm will choose that method of production or that choice of technique at any particular time based on the factor prices that is the firm can produce an optimal combination of the factors based on the factor prices which yields either the maximum output for a given cost or a given output subject to a minimum cost so in the case of an engineering production function we can sum up as the firm has two choices either to maximize the output at a given cost or to produce a given level of output by minimizing the cost it simply means that the decision of the firm to opt for p1 p2 p3 or p4 method of production is based on the price of the factors used for the production of total output because ultimately firm's main aim is to maximize profits Now let's see what engineering costs are. Engineering costs are derived from engineering production functions. It's a fact that production and costs are like two sides of the same coin. We'll take a previous example of the production of pen. In order to produce a pen, initially its different components are produced such as the outer casing of the pen, the nib of the pen, the caps, the refills. So such components of the pen are produced separately and then these components are assembled together in order to produce the final output pen. So in order to understand the engineering cost each of the productive method is divided into sub activities that is in case of the production of pen we need different components such as outer casing nib caps refills etc so each of these components have a separate production method that is for the production of outer casing of the pen we require raw materials laborers and capital and then each of these inputs have to be paid the prices as well So all in all we get the cost of producing the outer casings for producing a particular number of pen 
Now, similarly, in case of producing nibs for the pens, we require certain amount of raw materials, similarly laborers and capital for the production of nibs. And then if we add up the price of raw materials, price paid for the labor and capital, we get the cost for producing the nibs for the pen. Similarly, in case of refills as well as caps, we require raw materials, labor and capital for the production of caps for the pen as well as for the refills and the price paid for these inputs for the production of caps and refills for the pen will give us the cost of producing the caps as well as the cost of producing the refills separately. So if we add up the cost of producing the outer casings with the cost of producing the nibs with the cost of producing the caps and refills, we get the total cost of producing the pens. This is what is called the engineering cost. So in economics, when we say about the total cost of producing the output, we consider the man hours devoted for producing the output. We consider the raw materials taken up for the production. We consider the amount of capital that is being used for the production, etc. But when we take into account engineering cost, here the production method is divided into sub-activities. Like for the production of a pen, different components are used such as outer casing, nib, caps, etc. So each of that component needs to be produced and each of that component incurs cost as well. So by adding up the cost of all those components, we get the final cost of producing the pen. That is what is called as engineering cost. So to sum up what engineering costs are, if a particular production method is considered by a firm in order to produce an output, that productive method is divided into sub-activities and then for each phase, the quantities of factors of production are estimated and the cost of each phase is calculated on the basis of the prevailing factor prices. The total cost of that particular method of production will be the sum of the cost of its different phases. Here we have to keep in mind that in each phase, the characteristics of the inputs determine the cost of production in each method of production. An important point to be noted here is that engineering costs usually refer only to the production cost and it does not include the administrative cost that is it takes into account the cost of producing an output the cost related to the amount of raw materials used the price paid to the laborers in the form of wages the price paid to the capital etc while administrative cost such as technical cost managerial cost entrepreneurial skills all these aspects are not considered in engineering costs Hope you all have understood what engineering production functions and engineering costs are. Thank you so much. Do subscribe and share the video.